This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're joined in our Democracy Now! studio here in New York by the L.A.-based psychedelic soul band Chicano Batman. They describe their new album, Freedom is Free, as a move to unravel our minds of fear from the powers that be and replace it with self-empowerment. Freedom must be restored to what it's always been, controlled by no person and subject, only to the infinite flow of the elements. While we're here on Earth, we should rejoice in its worth. Well, for more, we are joined by the lead vocalist, Bardo Martinez, and bass player, Eduardo Arenas, uh, who also sings. And uh, we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Thank you. Thank so, um, Bardo, how did you come up with the name Chicano Batman? It was just kind of like a sketch in a notebook. You know, um, it was I was going to UCLA at the time and uh, surrounded. You know, there's a lot of Latinos in LA, but there's not so many of them in college, right? And so, uh, you know, we kind of stay together and stick it together. So the name Chicano was always around me and uh, Where you know, were whether youth groups uh, in Santa Ana. Mm -hmm. I grew up in La Mirada, which is right on the border of LA County and Orange County. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where it came from, just hanging around in the university, feeling a little bit alienated and kind of like in need of a hero. So uh, there we go, Chicano Batman. And how did you come to be a part of forming Chicano Batman, Eduardo? Well, at the time I was working at KPFK, we had a radio show called Soul Rebel Radio, and it's a youth radio program uh, once a month. And um, so That's I would work the Pacifica on Pacifica Station. Exactly, in, uh, in Los Angeles. And we would do a lot of events. And I would see Bardo, a lot of the fundraisers we would do. We do a lot of parties, bands, and that kind of thing. So I just kept checking in with Bardo every time I'd see him a couple of times. But we had, uh, we both had lived in Brazil. We had a passion for Tropicalia music, which is late 60s, uh, like revolutionary music from Brazil. And um, we just had a lot in common in terms of the aesthetic values that we find in music. And uh, so we became music partners first, and then, you know, the relationship grew from there. So. Talk about this. This is your third album, Freedom is Free? Yes. Talk about the title song, Freedom is Free. Well, the idea is that, you know, we walk around our neighborhood, our city, you know, you travel the country, you travel the world, and uh, obviously there's the powers that be, the status quo. And oftentimes, as we all know, uh, it's not there to give you freedom. It's there to oppress you in many, in all kinds of ways. And uh, being a person of color, you walk the streets, you know, feeling the glances that people throw at you, feeling their their preconceived notions of who you are doesn't necessarily, you know, uh, boost your confidence. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's really trying to, to find that confidence and, and to say that, you know, nobody can control how I feel, that I can manifest my own destiny um, through my own actions, through my own feelings. I can be happy if I want to, you know. One of your lyrics is, you got your guns up on display. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just like whether it's the police who, you know, have harassed us when we're on the street or when we're going home after a late night, um, or whether it's like, you know, going through the security check at the airport. Um, it's just guns everywhere, and people feel confidence in guns. Um, and obviously that's related to a lot of, you know, the, the massacres that have been happening, all that happen all the time, obviously, most recently in Las Vegas. And it's, it's, it's really a shame that people just, you know, resort to, to essentially, like, getting a high off of that. And so it's like, you know, yeah, you could do that. You could, you could continue doing that, continue killing, continue, you know, boasting. But we're going to find our own confidence in our own soul and our own being and our own ability to rejoice and live life. Let's go to Freedom is Free. Sweat 
Take a street on the street Freedom Freedom is Free. It's the title track of the new album of Chicano back then. Our guests are Bardo Martinez and Eduardo Arenas. Um, Eduardo, this song, um, like the other songs, you actually wrote not under President Trump, but before that, right, during the Obama years. Does right. it matter to you who is president? No, it, does, it didn't matter. It was— it's Hillary, Obama, Mitt Romney. I mean, none of it mattered. Some of these, I think you live in the system. You see, I think when we were 18, 19 years old, we kind of started coming around when the Bush administration was preparing to go to Iraq. And you kind of see all of that unfold. You know, then you see um, the Afghanistan war uh, escalate. So you're thinking deep down inside, there's, there's a big element of hope. You know that a lot of youth have that this world cannot really be as horrible as it is if millions and millions of people all over the world are in protest for the same thing. But then, when you realize that the opposite is actually happening, then you get fed up, and you get fed up, and the cycle happens again, and then it happens again in another country, and one country to another country. And so, um, a lot of this music was written in response to just a decades long of consciousness, you know, and uh, it just so happened that Trump is now in power which resonates even a thousand times more, hmm. you know. So, Bardo, you performed in Las Vegas, right, for Bernie Sanders? Yes, we did. What was that like? That was a mass gathering of thousands? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really inspirational. I mean, I think the feeling—there was a lot of hope at that time. All of us were really kind of, like, supporting his vision, and there were so many people behind Bernie Sanders, obviously. And— uh, 
I don't know. It, it's, I wish I could tap into that hope right now, you know, that feeling of how, it, how I felt then, because now, obviously, we're in a completely different situation. Yeah, for the first time, we can trust a politician, you know, someone that feels like the same ideas we're sharing, someone that, that believes in, in, in free education and health care and that kind of those, these universal things that are, that are human rights. And we've never heard politicians talk like that. So when you get revved up around this idea, around this force, then you want to support. Bardo, can you set up the taker story for us? Sure. Um, I read this book by, by the name of uh, the author. His name is Daniel Quinn. The book is called Ishmael. And essentially, the whole book tries to break down the myths of Western civilization. Um, I've been through school my whole life. You know, I went through the educational system. Um, I have a master's in Latin American studies, uh, BA in history, and so I've always, always been digging into history, history, history books, you know, sociology, economics, all that stuff. And this book for me was basically tied everything that I had ever learned in my life and in a very, like, simple epistemology of saying, like, you know, essentially that uh, there's, like, a list between, like, one through ten that basically these are the myths. A through G, that that you know, uh, Western civilization has perpetuated not just not not just Europe and the United States, but just like you know, at a certain point, humanity changed their way of life from a uh, like pre-agricultural um, hunter-gatherer, etc., way of being, in which humans have been living for thousands of years. You know, just basically continuing the lineage of life, just like any other creature on the planet and stepped into this notion and it really and it's really an ideology of saying no we actually own the land we own the air this is this fence demarcates my land you can't cross it you can not not only can you cross it but that animal can cross it and if that animal can cross it we'll you know actually what we're going to do is annihilate that species so that our crops can grow and so anyways so, that, that leads us to now. So let's so go to the taker's story. This is Chicano Batman performing in the studios of Democracy Now! So we're about to embark on a journey. This is the taker's story. Separate from every living thing That man is the end result of evolution That man is the end result of evolution Agricultural revolution. Mass killings and mass graves. Globalization of slaves. Genocide and extinction. All the functions of civilization. Mass killings and mass graves. Globalization of slaves. Genocide and extinction. Yes, you know that the war will never be over, cause war is our bread and butter. We've been living 
living a lie that this is no place or any other. Living creature that doesn't think like you and me. Yes, now we're getting to the root of the Taker story. What you do don't work for us We'll turn you into dust You savages are wild So make it and so free If you don't want to die You have to live like me Taker story here in our studios at Democracy Now. It's part of their new album, Freedom is Free. This is Democracy Now, democracynow.org. And um, two of the members of that band, Bardo Martinez, lead vocalist, Eduardo Arenas, who is bass player, also sings, um, are here. Um, let's talk about the ad that you decided to do, the Johnny Walker ad, uh, the commercial earlier this year, where you sing, this land is your land. Let's go to a clip.
That's the Johnny Walker ad. Talk about um, how you decided to do this ad and why they were interested in this land as your land uh, and the sort of radical roots of Woody Guthrie's song, Bardo. Sure. I think they saw Chicano Batman, and I think they've been seeing as what we're, we're doing as kind of like representing, obviously, Latino culture, you know, and our way of being like a modern representation of it through our the way we are embracing music and the way we're putting ourselves out there. Um, and um, what do you think, Eduardo? The Johnny Walker cam campaign, they wanted to do something in terms of celebrating diversity. So Chicano Batman was, they approached us in, ter in regards to that. We have been playing for nine years. We've been doing a lot of different festivals. Our music is speaking for itself right now. And, um, and it was great because there was a lot of strength and a lot of power in having us do a song like This Land Is Your Land, which we traditionally, growing up, we listened to as something that was synonymous with the Pledge of Allegiance or something like that. Because nobody ever explains to you what fascism is, you know, when you're in second grade. And you don't understand it. Uh, some people don't understand it for the rest of their life. So when we woke up to the idea of it, we were actually, it was actually an empowering thing to sing This Land is, is your land, this land is my land, okay? Like DACA, you know, like uh, all this oppression, all this racism, all this prejudice, like those are the real borders. I mean, this is our land too. It's been our land for a very long time. You know, so there's, a, a, there's an empowerment in saying that to the whole country because, you know, people like to, they, they want to disagree with that notion. Yeah, I think, I think just uh, the mere notion of seeing our faces on the camera, you know, just our faces on the camera, right? In the way, in the light, you know, being dressed like this, you know, kind of like an official, you know, type of thing. I'm like, you know, and then getting this played, like, like say in the Grammys, you know, it's a big look. It's a big look for, for who we represent. I mean, Johnny Walker played it during they the Grammys. They played it during the Grammys. And uh, during the Super Bowl. I think so as well, yeah. So. And what was the response of the fans? It was like 99% was just positive. I mean, I remember playing a show in San Antonio, and somebody was telling me that they were writing their master's thesis on us doing that song, you know, and what it meant uh, from his Texas kind of perspective as a Latino. And you just, a lot of people are, uh, I think a lot of people that are not so particularly uh, liberal or political are, are being shaken up to that reality. Like, I didn't know that we can do this. You know, this is my first step, in, step into this other alternate reality that Latinos can be successful, that we can have a voice, that we can express our passion, that we can succeed at something. And I think that's what the backlash, I mean, that backlash, that's the support we're getting from all the fans. And it's beautiful. La Jura uh, is the song you sang. It's in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and you wrote it. I wrote the music and I uh, co-wrote it with Bardo on the vocals. So talk about first what it means and what it's about. La Jura is a term that we call police officers in Los Angeles. They say it all over the country, too. Um, la Jura, uh, Puerco, La Chota. I mean, there's, there's so many different phrases. Popo, Fivo. Um, and so for the song in particular, it was really a response to, to what the, the Black Lives Matter movement is doing. And they're putting a lot of attention on police brutality. And police brutality has existed for a very long time, even before Rodney King uh, uh, captured, you know, the whole situation was captured on video. And so this is the actual story that happened a few blocks down from where I lived. And um, one of our neighbors got shot in the back a bunch of times by a police officer. And the bodies laid on the floor for like seven hours while the alibi is being created. And, uh, and if we are youngsters, maybe at this point, maybe 19 years old, and that we're thinking that justice will prevail. You know, this police officer is going to get fired and this and that. Then you realize that um, the law protects a lot of people, you know, a lot of criminals also. And so it's just like you can only take so much of this. You know, it's happening every day. You can only take so much of it. And uh, you just kind of feel the lack of compassion and empathy in this world. And, uh, and sometimes um, if politicians are not taking this on and the people are really taking it on and you're still not being heard, all we can really do is put it into songs can and then we, let it flow. Bardo, can you share the words in English that we're about to hear in Spanish? The other night, a very terrible night, they shot a friend of mine. 
on a street near here, they left him abandoned, lifeless, near the corner. I don't understand because those that are supposed to protect do the opposite. They kill the innocent. So this is La Jura by Chicano Batman. Cerca de aquí lo dejaron abandonado, un objeto sin vida junto a la esquina. That's Chicano Batman. We're speaking on a week when um, it was sort of the last chance for people to apply for DACA, um, who— uh, this is the last chance for people to apply for DACA um, before the program ends. That was Trump's uh, decision. What are your thoughts on that, Eduardo, both on DACA and also the wall that he wants to build that he says Mexico will pay for, though he's demanding Congress pay for it, which means the American people? Uh, there's so many volumes you can speak on. It. It's, it's, it's emotional, right, because um, a lot of our families are immigrants. You know, my, my mom, pre-DACA, she just went her way back into adult high school, um, went to college, you know, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, became a teacher. She's from Michoacan, Mexico. So and here I am, you know, a beneficiary of that whole system and that whole struggle. And it's really hard. It's really hard to make it. You know, so then when you offer a promise to somebody um, to get that same chance, and then you take it away, that's a, that's, a, that's a mental blow. That's an emotional blow, not only to that person, but to the family and the unit. So it's now in this era, it's, it's really tough because, one, we have an insecure president that's overcompensating for a lot of things. And it's really weird because it's like a rampage of anything. Put anything in the machine, and he'll just, he'll just like, 
tear it up and throw it out. And so, um, like the wall, I mean, like in California, I can only imagine the, the surplus of, of, of food that is on the trees and our plants, you know, because the, the economy is, is getting hit. The economy will get hit and it'll continue to get hit. Um, but not just that. I mean, I know that's a lot of news talk, but it's just the families, man, they're getting broken up. You know, and I think that has a deep scar that lasts multiple and multiple generations. And I think that's very, very damaging. And that has consequences that our grandchildren are going to feel. Eduardo, um, well, Eduardo mentioned the machine, um, rage against the machine, uh, Zach De La Rocha. What kind of meaning did this Chicano musician have for you in the roads he paved? Well, for me, when I was a junior, you know, partially after listening to your uh, killing your drill, killing they kill and drill series on Nigeria, uh, when I was a kid, that kind of just woke me up to a lot of stuff, and uh, I started just reading. I picked up books on Che Guevara, and the Zapatista movement, and because of that, um, whatever you know, listening to music, and then whatever was happening on the radio, and then you hear Zapatista this, or I was like, or Che this, I was like, oh damn, this is me right here. That was all about it. I was I was super, just like newly awakened. To, you know, and especially being, you know, looking and in, looking into my roots and who I am, um, you know, that all related to what I was reading and to what I was learning in, you know, Latin America. It was I was learning about who I am, you know, and all the struggles and all the richness that Latin America is. Where did your parents come from? My mom is from Cartagena, Colombia, and my dad is from Jalisco, Mexico. And so Zach de la Rocha was for me just like, I mean, he just exemplified all that, and he was just giving it strong and, you know, at a top-notch level. So, I mean, I think for all of us kids in L.A., it was just like, regardless of your background, it's just a, a really, it was just like a light, you know, that really propelled us towards making music and, you so know. So where do you guys head from here? Where does Chicano Batman go from New York? We continue our tour uh, across the whole country, supporting our, our album Freedom is Free. And then next year, we're probably taking it uh, to Europe and to a bunch of other continents. And uh, it's, it's, it's time. Well, thank you so much for joining us and performing in our studios. Uh, welcome. Bardo Martinez and Eduardo Arenas uh, with Chicano Batman. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. If you want to see this interview in Spanish, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.